about 10 years ago, we had a similar severe drought like the Western Cape region of South Africa is currently experiencing. Back then, I slapped together a simple gravity-fed grey water system which ran the bath and wash water directly onto the lawn. Since then, the system has been in use every summer, which is our dry season. My neighbor had a fancier system using a pump, but the smell it produced was quite off-putting. After recently chatting to a friend who built his own system, I started looking into a pump-assisted dry water system again. He revealed the secret to prevent the smell. Do not store grey water. You only need a tank large enough to act as a buffer. A 50 to 100 litre sump will do the trick. He referred me to a great website, a link in the description below, by Tim, a South African who shares his wonderful research. He started by doing some actual measurements of how much grey water an average bath or shower produces and then shares his experiences and designs, including local prices. While looking around in my garden to where I could bury a sump, I got a brainwave to utilize the empty space available in a manhole, of which I have three in my yard. I first had to find a tank which would fit its rectangular shape. I actually found a number of possibilities, ranging from plastic crates to a small dustbin. On my way to go and buy the latter, I quickly popped into a second-hand shop where I saw a fiberglass inner of a geyser which would fit. It was half the price of the bin and ten times stronger. Its rounded end is ideal for the food valve. It was easily cut to size using a small angle grinder. To raise the mano lid to give access to the pipes and wires, I made up a wooden frame which also serves to keep the tank upright. Both frame and tank are loose and can easily be removed to service the system. This is the drain where the whole system is. It simply opens like this. So first there is a strainer. That takes out the core stuff and this you can just simply remove and clean it out under a tap. A level switch that switches on and off automatically. So the motor is just nearby. So my gate opener power came out of here to 20 volt mains and then I just installed this little circuit here which you can switch on and off if you like so if you need to clean the unit you can switch it off over here there's simply just the timer and the relay in there i will show you the circuit this is a weatherproof box the motor itself can tolerate rain so it's a sealed unit the circuit is quite simple the level switch controls everything. Normally, on a low level, nothing is energized. As soon as a high level is reached, the timer is started, and through its normally close contact, the relay will energize starting the pump. The pump will normally run until a high level is reached and everything gets switched off in the same state it was before. However, if the pump runs dry or has air in it, the timer will time out, opening its contact, dropping out the relay and stopping the pump. This protects the pump against running dry or if system is blocked. It'll now stay in this state until the power to the system is recycled, meaning you have to give it some attention and uh, figure out what's gone wrong. Now the system is filling up, the float switch is lifting, and when it gets to that counterweight, it'll... That's the washing machine, doing its final rinse, so water is relatively clean. A little bit of soap in it still. So it takes about 50 liters or so. It takes about 3 minutes to empty it. The beauty about this system, there we go. So the pump is now kept in. So you'll see it keeps filling it at the moment. And if the pump takes longer than about 5 minutes to empty the tank, it, the timer will time out and the whole process will stop. So for in case if the pump is blocked, if it's got air in, if there's a blockage in the pipes or simply if the limit switch, the level switch doesn't work, it will um, it'll just time out. And then if the system does overspill, if it overflows, 
it will just it won't make a mess it will just go into the drain so it takes about four moves of the sprinkler to cover the whole front lawn it's quite efficient the sprinkler itself is just a very simple sprinkler that cannot really block up and therefore is quite efficient so the level switch has got a fair amount of hysteresis and as you can see it it's going to stop any minute now and it gets to the bottom before exposing the food valve. There we go. Servicing the system is needed about once a week. It takes about 10 minutes. The first thing you do is switch off the power so that the motor does not start when you fiddle with the float switch. Okay, so you first remove strainer and this you can then you take out the pipe and this whole frame just comes out so you can just do that quite easily and put that to the side so it's out the way and then the next thing would be to take out the strainer on the foot switch so these that just comes out and to undo the, that one you can see it's one fitting exactly inside the other two for extra in the whole tank get this come out it's quite heavy when it's put water in it and this is just simply empty in the garden so the rest of the sewage just runs underneath the tank so this is a normal food valve non return valve and the tank stands there by itself and then when you put the frame back the Float switch goes in there. Cleaning everything is just under running water. So the strainer is good. Mm. And this is flat from the washing. Comes off very easy, and you can just give it away from the inside. I'm just saying with the other one. Clean the, clean the wall. That's it. So this is a 32 milliliter. Uh, sorry, 25 millimeter and a 40 millimeter just happens to fit exactly over it, so it's just a loose fit. But that extra strainer does help to prevent the flood getting into the motor. Okay, so before putting the lid on, just sweep this in place and serve it. So luckily all my pipes come out in one place or roughly in one place. So what I've done is I have just un I undid the little inspection thingy and then just put a simple pipe fitting over there. So I've done it with a couple of the pipes, the bath, the shower, the washing machine and the basin. Don't mind the frog in the dog's bowl there. He's just drinking water. So what I do is in winter, the end of winter, I would then put in a few stoppers into all the appropriate pipes. And in the beginning of winter, I would just simply knock them out and the water will just run straight down to the drain. So these then all go in this pipe. And it's all the way to the, 
into the drain. The other pipe coming from the pump there, and then the outlet of the pump, just on a hose pipe, and onto the lawn, with a very simple sprinkler. So I have got an adapter in the sprinkler here, which I can remove, so if I want to irrigate the back garden, I can do it. I will just bring that pipe to here, past here, connect it up to this pipe, and then irrigate the back garden. My pump is strong enough to easily irrigate the back garden.